when the American company General Dynamics announced a competition for engines for its Atlas III and V rockets in 1996, everyone was shocked when it announced that the winner was the RD-180. All engine production is concentrated in Russia. Engine sales were once through the roof through a joint venture between Pratt and & Whitney and NPO Energomash. However, since the sanctions of May 2014 and on the basis of a lawsuit filed by Elon Musk and SpaceX, a court order has temporarily suspended the conclusion of new contracts. But on the basis of old contracts, engine deliveries have continued. Although NASA was eager to copy the Russian engine, they didn't succeed, at least not with satisfactory results, after they spent about a billion dollars in five years. That is, until the new Elon Musk engines. And now SpaceX's new gen engine will absolutely outclass Russia's best engine. Let's find out everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Eight years ago, Elon Musk was right to warn the U.S. about its relationship with Russia and the rocket industry. At that time, Russian Deputy Prime Minister Dmitry Rogozin sent shockwaves through the space industry when he announced Russia would no longer supply rocket engines to the U.S. Buying Russian-made RD-180 engines was seen as a good idea in the aftermath of the Cold War, especially when relations between the U.S. and Russia had thawed and developing domestic RD-180s would have meant a significant investment from the U.S. government. The U.S. is licensed to produce a domestic version of the RD-180 if it chooses to, but due to a lack of investment from the government and industry, it's never done so. It's a decision that was coming back to haunt the U.S. space industry as it clambers to find alternative ways to power the Atlas V. An unpublished Pentagon study written by retired Air Force Major General Mitch Mitchell in May of 2014, said an eventual Atlas V grounding would delay as many as 31 missions and cost the U.S. nearly $5 billion. More seriously, Brian Harvey, an author of several space books, shared, for the Americans not to take RD-180s anymore would probably be quite disruptive of their space program in the medium term. Everyone was worried and trying to hold on to Russia, except SpaceX CEO Elon Musk, who rattled the U.S. military space launch market, challenging the monopoly of the ULA by suing the U.S. Air Force. Referencing the U.S. dependency on the RD-180 and sanctions against Rogozin, SpaceX's court complaint read, it is hard to imagine any way in which entrenching reliance on Russian rocket engines while funding the Russian military industrial complex with U.S. tax dollars serves national security interest, especially at a time when the administration has sanctioned individuals associated with the same military industrial complex over the Ukraine annexation. This definitely became a helpful warning for the U.S. And finally, and on the basis of a lawsuit filed by SpaceX, a court order has temporarily suspended the conclusion of new contracts. But on the basis of old contracts, engine deliveries have continued. As a result, studies began for a next-generation rocket engine in the U.S. Elon Musk not only talked, but he also acted. And finally, SpaceX has succeeded with the Raptor engine, which is superior to the RD-180 in every aspect. In the current situation, when the U.S.-Russia relationship really reached a dead end, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that SpaceX is the government's savior. Notably, Elon Musk mocked Russia as the country that said it would stop providing rocket engines to the U.S. in retaliation to sanctions placed on it for invading Ukraine. So why can Elon be so confident? How does his engine outclass Russia's best rocket engine? Raptor was publicly discussed by SpaceX's Max Bozov at the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics Commercial Crew Cargo Symposium in 2009. Until now, the latest version of SpaceX Raptor called Raptor 2 was developed and manufactured for use on the in-development SpaceX Starship. Raptors use the so-called full-flow combustion cycle which means that all oxygen drives the oxygen turbo pump and the fuel drives the methane turbo pump. Elon Musk confirmed that the production had reached seven engines per week. 
On the other hand, the Russian RD-180 is a completely different story. It's larger and much heavier than the Raptor, manufactured in the early 90s. In a way, Raptors are like an attempt to build a better violin than Stradivarius did using modern methods. SpaceX has access to better diagnostics and more sophisticated simulation techniques than Russia did. Both are technologically based on the previous generation design for the Buran program. That's why the Raptor resembles the RD-180 in that it feeds the pre-burner exhaust into the combustion chamber, ensuring that almost all the fuel and oxidizer stored in the rocket's tanks are used to generate thrust. Honestly, the Raptor also relies on a tweak to Russia's approach. Both fuel-rich and oxidizer-rich flows power the turbo pumps, theoretically resulting in maximal efficiency. Possibly the greatest technical advantage the Raptor has over the RD-180 is that they use methane as a fuel other than kerosene, which the RD-180 does. Kerosene will just gunk up the works of an engine after repeated use. Methane has a higher specific impulse and burns cleaner. It's also much easier in principle to synthesize on Mars, which Musk aims to do. Finally, it's necessary to discuss the specs of the SpaceX Raptor and RD-180. For context, on February 10th, 2019, just days after SpaceX began testing its first full-scale Raptor prototype ever completed, the engine briefly reached a main combustion chamber pressure just shy of 269 bar. That narrowly beat records set by Russia's RD-270 and RD-180 engines. According to the latest announcement by Musk, as SpaceX continues to ramp up ground testing of the upgraded engine variant, Raptor 2 now operates routinely at 300 bar main chamber pressure. Raptor 2 produces a thrust of 230 tons by burning methane and LOX. The RD-180 generates 386 tons of sea level thrust, but notably has two combustion chambers and two nozzles. It uses RP-1, kerosene, and liquid oxygen. In other words, the Russian engine can be seen as one engine with two combustion chambers or as two engines that share one turbo pump. So let's imagine two Raptor engines. They can fit in the size of one RD-180, definitely creating much higher thrust. Next, the thrust weight ratio at sea level for the RD-180 is around 80, while for the Raptor it's around 200, which means it's two and a half times better. Raptor 2 current cost is around a million dollars, but Musk promises it will drop to maybe 250,000 when serial production begins and when 3D printing of parts begins to be used. Until recently, the RD-180 cost was nine to $10 million. Well, cost is one thing, but another strong consideration for the cost of the engine is whether or not it's reusable. And here, the RD-180 is not reusable, or at least has never been reused, which is different from the Raptor, which can be reused up to 50 flights. In short, SpaceX Raptor truly is an excellent engine. It'll completely help the U.S. broomsticks perform all the important tasks with no connection at all to Russia. And anyway, Rogozin should apologize for lying to himself and everyone else when he said the Russian engine is still the world's best rocket engine. Well, that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Hey, don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section because your support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.